So uh, I'm in the process of uh, making some videos for a uh, playlist that is called uh, uh, Vibration in uh, 3D Experience. However, uh, one of the videos that I wanted to do was a, actually a, a three-dimensional model of a, a three-story frame structure. And I noticed that there are some certain things that uh, needs to be done in it that requires going to a, a more basic problem uh, in the 3D experience and see how it's modeled. So this particular video, video tutorial number 15, is intended to show you some of the things that are going to be needed when I go to that particular problem on vibration. Here's the situation. We have a structure like that. It's made of uh, basically three components, as you can see. And uh, this pro th these pieces are welded together. They're made out of steel and they're welded together. I'm going to be modeling it with 3D brack elements, but it can be done in a single body, part body, a single part, okay, without actually appealing to bodies. But I will show you what happens when you try to do it like that, okay? Uh, this left end is clamped. The top uh, top face is subjected to 2,000 Newton, a linear elastic material, and uh, I'm, I'm going to make all the geometric effects uh, uh, off, and therefore it's going to be a very simple linear static problem. Now, in tutorial 15, I'm going to solve this thing as, an, as, as a combination of uh, three bodies, body two, body three, body four. And then once I do that, I'll come back and show you what happens if I did it as a single part body, a single part, instead of breaking it up into bodies. Tutorial 16 is going to be repeating the same problem, except that I'm going to do it as an assembly of three parts. Excuse me, three parts. Okay, so right now it's going to be a single part but made of four parts. Now, the geometry uh, this is the playlist that I was talking about. Notice that it has nothing to do with the uh, statics problem, uh, but it's about doing FEA, in, uh, a basic problem in uh, vibration with 3D experience. And down here, tutorial seven is going to be model analysis of three-story uh, frame structure, but model with solid elements, not with beam elements, okay? In order to do that, I have to go through these 15 and 16, which are uh, a, a, a prelude to what you're going to see there. Now, the geometry is given here, uh, 3,000... Or a thousand, a thousand meter, a thousand millimeter long, and these are the dimensions. Okay, and uh, when I mesh it with, when I make three bodies, body two, body three, body four, any one of them is subject can be extruded using the sweep sweep meshing. It's going to look like that. So, for example, at this top left corner, you see, or or the the, the bottom left corner, you see a mesh like this. Uh, at that juncture, you see something like that, and at the top here, or top right corner, you see something like which is which is fairly uh, reasonable. Now, uh, I'm going to be doing sweep 3D meshing, and this these are the specifications that I'm going to use: size of the mesh 10 millimeters and 60 layers through the length. And uh, uh, you will see that when I do it like this. At the scene where these pieces come together, they're duplicate node numbers. They're, they're different node numbers, uh, and therefore they have to be somehow uh, told that things on this on this interface they move together. So I have to create, use a, a tie connection, and I will do that as you'll see. And uh, before I go ahead and do it, as I show you what happens if you do it as a single part. There we are. You can see that if you did this thing as a single part, there won't be an issue with this toy connection. However, look at what happens here. Look at what happens to the mesh at this junction. And of course, in order to fix this, you have to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, some fancy moves such as partitioning, etc., which I don't want to don't want to do. I avoid. So I'm not going to use it as a single part. I'm going to use single part, but made of bodies, okay, three bodies, okay. So uh, let's go back here, we're gonna go and do this thing in uh, uh, 3D experience, 
release 2024. Okay, so I will go to the 3D experience interface. So uh, we go to part design. Here is my part and uh, what I will do, I'll start making body two and body three and then body four, okay? Uh, so uh, uh, right now I'm gonna put the cursor there, right click in uh, at the very bottom, uh, body number two, and it calls underli underline, whatever I make is gonna be in that, uh, in that body. So on that vertical plane, I will sketch and uh, it's going to be a, uh, uh, a hundred millimeter by hundred millimeter uh, square. This is hundred millimeter and uh, hundred millimeter. And inside of that, I'm going to draw another rectangle or square, seventy by seventy. This is seventy by 70 and the distance from here to here is going to be 15 and from here to here is also 15 okay good exit and pad it in the backward direction by a thousand millimeter Flip the direction to pad it backward a thousand millimeter. Now, please note that because body three and body four look exactly the same thing, I can usually use this thing uh, to create the whole model, but I rather rather do it the long way, which is going to be basically creating body three by drawing, by drawing a sketch and then adding it, etc. But there are other ways of doing it because you can do translations and rotations, stuff like that, on bodies that are already created. However, uh, I will do that the long way. So put the cursor there, right click and insert, right click and insert body number three, underline, that means whatever you do is gonna be in there now. So uh, there are different ways of doing it. For example, I can select this uh, vertical plane, same vertical plane, do another rectangle, or if you are if you are uh, happy, you can actually mirror some of these things with respect to uh, a particular line. Let's actually try to mirror it. So this line, uh, control that line, all these vertical thingies, and these horizontal ones, this one and that one, and that one, and I'm going to mirror it with respect to that line. So. Uh, where is the mirror icon? So let's go ahead and find a mirror. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, mirroring is... Let me see for a second. It looks like a bell, so... Uh, hang in there. Ah, oh, there, mirror, right there. Mirror with respect to that. Now, fortunately, it looks like I missed whatever I picked. So let me uncheck that. Uh, so uh, this, control that, control this, all of these. And we're going to mirror it with respect to that line or we can select select uh, mirror creates mirror element selected selected element to be mirrored now select the axis or the line oh uh,
Okay, so uh, there are different ways of uh, making the second body. So I'm going to, uh, on that same play, uh, plane, I'm going to sketch. Uh, well, I'll, I'll do it the long way, and the long way being that I create two rectangles here, exactly like before, and dimension them just like that. So this is 100 millimeter. So is that one? Okay, and then inside of that, I'll draw another square. Uh, dimension them 70 by 70. Seventy. Okay, and then put the 15 millimeter distance between these two. And of course, 15 millimeter between these two. So now it's going to be exactly the same shape. All right, uh, exit. Oh, uh, I have to bring it down here. So let me do that. So I put this this line, control that line, give a zero distance between them, or you can uh, you can say uh, uh, coincident. Okay, good. Exit. All right. So I'm gonna pad this thing but not from here so if you do a pad but uh, reverse the direction and by using these different uh, uh, limits you can actually do it the way you want for example if you click on that's what i want okay so here's what i did for this pad i did uh, 900 to minus 1900 okay so that's fine all right so that takes care of this now we're going to insert the third body. So uh, right click, body three, uh, sorry, body four. It's going to be body four. And that's the vertical line. Vertical line is this piece. Okay. So on that plane, I will sketch. Okay. Zoom in. Uh, my rectangle. Okay, let's clean it up. So uh, dimension wise, let's do this. Uh, dimensions, uh, go to dimensions here. This is gonna be 100. Uh, this is 100. Okay, and uh, good. And this, this I want to be on that line, so uh, let me draw the rectangle inside of it, and then uh, we'll move it. So this is going to be 70 by 70. Please notice I'm doing a lot of extra work for nothing, because there are easy ways of doing this thing. Just make one body and basically use, use it. Okay, so uh, from here to here is 15. And from there to there is also 15. Okay, finally, I want this thing to move all the way to the left. So this line control, actually, let me, this line control that line. You can say right click, or you can say, uh, or you can say dimension coincident, or you can actually go here and say coincident. Either way. These are stuff coming from Katia, so uh, I think thing that did it. Exit and pad it by a thousand millimeters in the other direction. A thousand millimeters. Okay. Oops. Flip. Good. So basically what you see here is what this thing is made of body two, body three, and body four, and they're not the same uh, in the same part. But okay, let's apply material properties to it. So we go to tools. Uh, let's apply properties of steel. Material browser. Actually, let me make it. How about that? Cancel that. Make it. Create a material. I'll call this thing. Uh, February 23, 
2024 steel okay and it's going to create right here right there i'm going to say right click apply close that apply it on this part check mark green check mark and then we go and put our values in it so double click on that under uh, structural uh, we don't need the density so we go to uh, uh, abacus multi physics mechanical elasticity elastic and this is 210 gigapascal i think that's what i had and poisson ratio 0.3 i think that's oops uh yeah so didn't like it so let's go ahead and see 0.3 or oh, this is comma three so close this let me go fix it a uh, point three Okay, very good. So a quick save here. Now, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and try to mesh this thing. So we go to uh, uh, structure model creation, uh, MTFEM. Okay, you go to meshing, find the sweep meshing. So uh, let's find it here, uh, sweep 3D. Let's start with this fellow. And I told you what I'm going to use 10 millimeters, 60 layers. Mesh it. This is body two that I'm meshing. There we are. Okay. Do the same thing for the other fellow. Same numbers. Mesh. Okay. And the same thing for this vertical one. And notice that. Uh, the interface, uh, th th there are actually nodes which have different node numbers. For example, let's see now. First of all, let, let me update this. Let me update that. And then I go and say display numbering, numbering visualization. You click on it. And if you zoom in, and if you put the cursor here from the bottom, you get 218. This element from the bottom is 218. This node number is 218. But if you go to from the top one, it's 6020. So you have to be careful here. There are multiple nodes at that location. And we're going to have to hide them. Okay, before we do that, though, I go to properties as 3D solid section. Uh, now, for each of these, I have to select them individually. You can select it from the, uh, from the, from the element or from the part whichever you want, doesn't matter, right here. So this is a body selected, you say okay, and do another one for this. The whole body is gonna get selected. Finally, that fellow, say okay. So we have, uh, these are our meshes, these are our properties, let me update. Okay, now, uh, let me hide, uh, let me hide this uh, mesh, show you the part. So I'm going to right click mesh visualization. I'm going to hide the mesh, but just see the parts. Okay, good. Now we have to hide these things. So how do you do the tying? So let me take you to the slide that I had in mind. It's right there. And there's two ways to do it. You can do it manually or you can do it automatically. Okay, you can use a tie detection. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, so under the uh, connections, here is when you do that manually, here is when you do that automatically. You click on it. And what you're saying is that, look, any two surfaces that are within some tolerance of each other, tie them. The nodes associated with those things. Or you can do it with mesh, either one. You do this or you do that, it makes absolutely no difference. So I use the geometry, okay? So I said uh, the whole model and uh, just say uh, apply and find the ties, find the ties. And it find, found those. If you want to know what they are, you select it. You see, it's, fi it's, it's finding these, okay? You select this, it's finding these. So that's fine. And then we say apply and okay. Good. So 
Uh, now we're going to do the rest of the problem, which means that you're going to go to uh, 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 structure scenario creation. This is when we apply the restraints and load. Select your model, finite element model, say OK. Good. Now we're going to do static analysis. So uh, let's go to procedures. Uh, this is a static step, and I'm going to uncheck all the geometric nonlinearities. Include geometric nonlinearity. No, uncheck it, and LGOM is off. And let me uh, uh, just sh see the part. So I'm going to use the visualization, visualization, visibility manager. Don't show me the the the. Don't show me the element, show me the part. And by the way, these things are the connections. If you don't want to see them, okay, you can say, don't show me the connection. It doesn't show it to you, this is connections, okay? All right, good. Now let's go ahead and clamp this in. So boundary condition, here is a, a clamp. All three degrees of freedom are fixed. There are no rotations here, this is, this is a fixed and Uh, apply a load here. So apply a load uh, force on that face. Let me zoom in. On that face of minus, minus, uh, I can't remember what it was. Let's check it. Minus 2000 Newton. Let me see for a second here. Uh, minus 2000 Newton. Very good. And then we say, uh, okay. Incidentally, if you want to, you already see the, saw the mesh, but if you want to see it, you just say, show it to me. And if you zoom in, you see that it's fairly similar to what I had before. Now, there may be some minor differences. That's because of the way I made it. It may have been different when I, when I uh, did it the first time and gave you the, the slides in the uh, pictures in the uh, slides. But anyway, this is it. So let's go ahead and uh, see whether it runs. Select the, just do a quick model and scenario check. Model and scenario check. No problem. Let's do a quick simulation check. These are all tied together. Otherwise, you'll fly away. It won't be a static problem, not properly restrained. But now it is because we tied them together. We did the automatic tie detection and then say find it and then apply and move on. Remember, in tutorial 16, I'm going to come back and do this problem as an assembly of parts, not as three bodies in a part, but as an assembly of three separate parts. This is just a simulation check, but there's a lot of nodes and elements here. These are break elements uh, and they're linear one, but uh, still there's a lot of nodes and elements. Okay, I think that is done without an issue. You see that? Okay, good. And now we're gonna run it or simulate. <clears throat> so okay. Uh, this problem may be fairly straightforward to uh, some of the people who are watching it. It's just that uh, I felt it's uh, necessary to show this business of uh, this tying business before we do the. Uh, the model analysis of three-story building with solid elements. And depending on how you do it, you maybe do it as a single part. You can have a problem with mesh unless you do a lot of extra work. You can do it as a part with several bodies in it, as I did here, or you can do it with an assembly of parts, uh, as I will do in tutorial uh, 16. I think this is done. It's tracking result. It better bend. 
without an issue and i'm pretty sure it will okay so close this this is the this is the initial step where there's no load and this is the final one as you can see okay so uh that's uh, pretty much it so notice that what i did is uh, i created uh in the same part i created uh, three bodies, body two, body three, body four. I mesh them using the sweep meshing. And then uh, with these specification, and then I had to tie the nodes using tie detection. And I said that if you did this thing as a single part with no bodies, everything in the part body, you may come up with a mesh like this, which is terrible. All right, good luck.